Hi, it's Monday, September the 23rd, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, talking about Saul Alvarez's attempt to wrestle the light heavyweight championship away from Sergei Kovalov. I thought they were going to make this easy for gamblers like you and me. I thought they were going to give us a catch weight. Like when Ray Leonard fought Donnie Lalonde for the light heavyweight title. Right? I wasn't expecting the guys to actually enter the ring or be able to show up for the weigh-in, weighing all the way up to 175 pounds. I thought Saul Alvarez, who fought his last fight at middleweight, 160, I thought he was going to use his popularity, use his bargaining leverage to bully 36-year-old, that's how old he is, folks, Kovalev, into losing two or three pounds for a big payday. But Canelo is different, isn't he? At this stage, it's all about legacy. I believe Canelo has done enough to be a Hall of Famer. He's had, really, one of the most spectacular career runs in recent memory, spanning several weight classes. So at this stage, Canelo wants to win the light heavyweight title at light heavyweight. Let me just take this moment to applaud him. Um, this really gets to me. This tells you all you need to know about the fighter. He's a champion entering the ring. Right? Catch weight suck. Um, I'm completely impressed completely impressed by Canelo's audacity here. Folks, this is a legitimate light heavyweight title fight. This is not a marketing gimmick. Now that said, let me just say the fight is upside down. The middleweight, the guy who just fought at 160, might be stronger at light heavyweight than the light heavyweight champ. If you look at the torsos of the fighters, Kovalev looks weight drained to me at 175. Canelo, by contrast, at least for his fight against Rocky Fielding at 168 pounds, right, one floor down from 175, had a chiseled torso. Chiseled. I believe Canelo's body will be able to take body shots better than Kovalev's body. I believe Canelo, just looking at his neck, looking at the absence of fat on his body at 168, looking at how different he looks at weigh-ins than he does in the time period before weigh-ins at 160 pounds. I get the feeling Canelo likely walks around in the 170s, if not the 180s. So, let me just say, if you look at Canelo's neck, folks, his neck is bigger than Kovalev's. Let me also say, too, that Canelo, who's shorter, has the shorter upper body. Now that's important because it's harder to find. Canelo's going to have an easier time finding Kovalev's upper body than Kovalev is Canelo's upper body. Understand Danny Jacobs over the first half of the Canelo-Jacobs fight could not find Canelo's upper body. Canelo, in my opinion, also has a hand speed advantage. I thought the first Golovkin fight was a car crash for Canelo. 
I really did. I thought he lost that fight. But you noticed in that fight in which Canelo's strategy was to fight off his back foot. You'll actually notice that when the fighters were in close, Canelo was throwing flurries in bursts. He's not quite Ray Leonard who could do it from start to finish, but in bursts, Canelo's hands are very fast. But my most controversial opinion here is that when it comes to power, it's competitive. Understand, I've long felt that Canelo, and I've said this in videos, is one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. Now, I've seen fighters who have been weight drained for several fights. Then they gain weight. Bernard Hopkins, right when he jumped, people forget, from middleweight to light heavyweight. He fights Antonio Tarver, right? The middleweight Bernard Hopkins had to pace himself, is giving away rounds to Jermaine Taylor because he wanted to come back late in the fight. The light heavyweight Bernard Hopkins had no such problems, at least not when he first got to light heavyweight. At a certain point, Hopkins, who fought well into his 40s, had to start dealing with father time, right? But understand, Hopkins, just in terms of resiliency, when he first gets to 175 after starving himself for years, right? Hopkins didn't have a donut for years. Right? Hopkins was doing whatever it took to make weight at 160. Hopkins at 175 suddenly had more energy, more pep, more resiliency. I think that's what you're going to see from Saul Alvarez. As hard as Crusher hits. Right? I'm not sure who the puncher is in this fight. I believe personally that Canelo probably hits harder to the body than Crusher. If we're going to get into who hits harder, you're going to have to name the punch. I believe when it comes to punching power, this fight is competitive. So it is my belief, again, the fight's upside down. It is my belief that the fighter who does not want to fight this fight in a phone booth the fighter who will not want to collapse the pocket and trade shots will be the perceived bigger man, Sergey Kovalev. I don't think Kovalev wants to trade shots with Canelo. I think Kovalev understands that he needs a bigger pocket. He doesn't want to attack Canelo. This isn't a situation where the bigger man sees the smaller man enter his division and decides he's going to make sure Canelo leaves the division knowing he's a middleweight, not a light heavyweight. This isn't that fight, folks. This is not Golovkin against Cal Brook. This fight has a different flavor. It has a different dynamic. I believe Kovalev is savvy enough at 36 to realize that he does not want a fight against Saul Alvarez. I believe he's going to be on his back foot throwing one of boxing's absolutely best jabs. Right? The fight's upside down. The fighter who's going to want to box from distance is going to be the bigger man, Kovalev. So what does that mean for gamblers like you and me? Right first, let me just say this. It's my theory that in betting on a fight, you want to take deals when they're offered. You don't necessarily want to put down your complete set of bets on a fight at one time. Right? If the casino is making a mistake, and the casino is offering you obscene odds on one side of the table. You have that here. As good as Canelo is, as successful as he's been, there simply is no way on God's green earth 
that Kovalev should be going off right now at a plus 350 to win the fight. If you take one thing away from this video, it is the urgency with which I'm suggesting that you throw some money today on Kovalev to win, simply to win, at a plus 350. Understand, you lock in those odds and it opens the door for other plays, including plays on Canelo. Right now, I'm not sure who wins this fight. Right? I would have taken Canelo had there been a catchway. But both of these guys are men. There is no catchway. You want Kovalev's title, you're going to have to fight Kovalev at Kovalev's weight class. Fair enough. So what I'm going to do instead is bet on the pacing of the fight. Right? I've already thrown money myself on Kovalev to win. Right? Simply because once the numbers hit a certain level, you say, what? You're giving me a plus 350? I'll take that. Bet $10, win 35, plus the return of your 10. Right? But in terms of the pacing of the fight, I believe Kovalev is going to be outside trying to establish a jab. I think he's smart enough to realize that Canelo can dodge jabs. So rather than go headhunting on Canelo, right, Kovalev should try to throw the jab to Canelo's shoulder, Canelo's bicep, right, Canelo's chest, if Canelo, you know, squares up. You want to throw the jab places where you can hit the guy while maintaining your distance without being lured into trying to find the guy. Right? Canelo has a brace on one of his knees. Kovalev has lost twice. Both times. Both times. After the first six rounds, right, he loses in the seventh round to Elida Alvarez. He loses in the eighth round to Andre Ward. Right? Both times he makes it out of the first half of the fight. Because I believe he's going to be cautious. Because I believe, and you have two great corners in this match. Two great corners. Canelo's corner is one of the very best in boxing. Right? Buddy McGirt has had problems with some fighters. I've seen Buddy McGirt blow fights. Right? But, you know, Paulie Malignaggi, by the way, has a complicated relationship with Buddy McGirt. I don't know if there's a uh, non-disclosure agreement involved but the guys don't really comment on each other that much right but buddy mcgirt has opened the door for kovalev it seems that kovalev needed someone in his corner to say to him hey player what what why go for the knockout you have a great jab let anthony yard walk into it a few times there's no rush you got 12 rounds right why dive in on a young lion? Why are you looking for Alvarez in the fight? Let the game come to you when you have this level of jab. I believe Buddy McGirt is going to have Kovalev mindful of spacing. I don't believe Kovalev's going to make the mistakes that Danny Jacobs made. Where Danny comes in and is looking for Canelo and Canelo has his legs at a wide base and is able to dodge shots and look great defensively. Then Danny switches to southpaw. It worked against Golovkin. It didn't work against Canelo. Canelo seemed to be taking Danny's southpaw rounds off. Canelo seemed to be winning the rounds when Danny went southpaw. Here, I believe Kovalev is just going to set up shop with the jab. I know the fight's in Vegas. I know Canelo's probably entering the ring, let's be real here, with about a two-round advantage. Right? I know, visually, it's going to look like a smaller man against a bigger man. Right? The crowd outside of the first row is not going to realize that Canelo has a fatter neck than Kovalev. Right? Canelo politically can play it up as, you know, a small guy 
visiting a big man's division. When you and I know that these guys are probably the same weight away from boxing. Right? But I believe Kovalev is going to be savvy. Because over time, the crowd's going to start to ask themselves the question if it's a low action fight. Which is what, if I'm in Kovalev's corner, that's what I want. I want a low action fight. At some point, someone has to ask the question of whether Canelo is doing enough to take Kovalev's title. Betting wise, I'm not expecting a lot to happen the first half of the fight. That's how I'm going to play it. Right? The casino's making a mistake on the odds. Canelo's a bit overvalued. So my money's on Kovalev. If Kovalev gets an early stoppage, great. I'm not going to be complaining. Right? They'll be giving me a plus 350. Right? On the Canelo side, if Canelo gets a stoppage, I'm going to concede the first six rounds, folks. Right? As bets trickle out, and I've looked hard and I have not seen an over-under on this fight. Right? I notice you're getting... Great odds. Canelo's like a minus 500 simply to win as I make this video. But if you focus on Canelo in the later part of the fight, Canelo to win in the 8th round, 16 to 1, ninth round, 16 to 1, 10th round, 16 to 1, 11th round, 17 to 1, 12th round, 20 to 1. The way I'm going to structure my play is I'm going to take, hell I've taken, Kovalev to win, plus 350. I believe those odds are going to drop. I'll be surprised if they don't. Right? I like Kovalev plus 350. I'm going to find a way to bet Canelo late. I'm going to find a way to have Canelo by decision. Now Canelo by stoppage is 7 to 4 in some shops. But I'm not sure if I want to spend the money on Canelo by stoppage in the early rounds. Because the problem with facing a guy with a great jab, right? Carlos Monzon, um, Larry Holmes, right? Is that that guy has a fence around him. The first few rounds, you have to be aware of that fence. Understand, Kovalev was reminded of his great jab. He just dusted off Anthony Yard. Off a jab. It's a jab that drops Yard. And if you look at the KO, looks like both of Yard's feet fly up. Right? Don't be confused. That jab's not a table setter. That jab is the main course. By the way, Kovalev is no slouch with the straight right hand. Right? He has a straight right hand. But here, against an elusive fighter with great upper body movement, who, quite frankly, is the better fighter up close? If I'm Kovalev, I want this to be a sleepy fight. So the bet I'm recommending is that you target Kovalev for the entire match because they're paying you. Canelo's overvalued in this fight. It's an odds play on the Kovalev side. And that you find a way to structure your bet. It might require you to bet rounds. Right? To take Canelo late. One way, let's say the over-under is nine and a half rounds. Right? One way would be to take the over. That gives you everything, everything above the over-under. And then to buy at 16 to 1, Canelo by KO in the two rounds before the over-under. Because I don't believe Canelo is going to be able to catch up with Kovalev 
for the first six rounds of this fight. I'm expecting Kovalev to get out the gate fast. Right? This is not the Rocky Fielding fight. Rocky Fielding does not have Kovalev's jab. Canelo will not be able to walk in, walk up to a guy, and try to be inside. This is not either Golovkin fight. Golovkin, to me, wins both. The second one is interesting because the second one, it looks to me like Golovkin wins that behind a jab. Right? But Golovkin's jab's a little bit different than a Kovalev jab. Golovkin's jab is a table setter. Right? That's a jab that just momentarily stuns you. Right? Kovalev's jab is like a Larry Holmes jab. It can take you out. It's a battering ram. Also, Andre Ward. Alvarez. You know, watch both guys between punches. I want you to look at Andre's movement in that infamous eighth round. Right? Understand, Andre gets inside because of arguably the best punch he threw in his entire career. It's a straight right hand. Right? Straight right hand from distance that lands flush on Kovalev's chin in a fight that up until that point was highly contested. Now what I want people to think about for a second is Andre Ward was one of boxing's absolute best technicians. <coughs> Let's remember, Andre Ward outthinks and outperforms, quite frankly, both Mikhail Kessler and Carl Frotch. We're talking about fighters of a certain era. Right? He beats Carl Frotch. Carl makes a comeback, but Andre wins that fight. Andre's a master technician. But yet, after 12 rounds against Kovalev, a fight I thought Andre lost, and after an additional 7 rounds against Kovalev in the rematch, the rematch was competitive. It's when Ward lands a haymaker. Again, I believe it's the best punch I know of that he threw in his career. It's a haymaker, a right hand. It's on the money. It's after Ward lands that punch and then jumps inside. In other words, Ward needed the opening to jump inside. Kovalev's jab is that good. It's that good good. Right? So then when Ward jumps inside, Ward starts going laterally. Look at the film. Right? Ward's inside, but Ward just doesn't just come inside and stay inside. Ward is working angles on both sides of Kovalev. Right? Very athletic stuff. Look at the Alvarez fight. You'll notice Alvarez is outside and he's moving in a way where he could actually outmaneuver Kovalev's jab. I don't believe Canelo has that level of athleticism. I just don't. And my point to you is against two super athletic fighters. <coughs> Kovalev makes it to the seventh round against Alvarez, right? That fight makes it to the second half. Kovalev goes all the way through the first Ward fight, makes it to the eighth round of the second fight. Right? Both Alvarez and Ward had problems getting inside. Let me also point out, too, that Kovalev fights Alvarez after losing to him in the seventh round, getting drilled three times, getting dropped three times. <coughs> and Kovalev wins the rematch by decision by emphasizing his jab. 
So if Kovalev has the mental toughness, and let's remember, the Ward fights in Las Vegas. If Kovalev, who's been to Vegas before, has the mental toughness to drown out the crowd, right? If he has the insight to realize that he doesn't want to collapse the pocket on Canelo, right? We've seen countless fights where guys try to collapse the pocket. What I want people to do is to look at James Kirkland's attempt to beat Canelo. Let's just say by now, opponents should realize that collapsing the pocket on Canelo isn't the best idea. Right? If Kovalev, who has sparred in the past with Golovkin, both guys were briefly with Abel Sanchez together. Sanchez claims that when they sparred, Golovkin had the upper hand. Right? Given that Golovkin was trying to collapse the pocket on Canelo, and Canelo went 12 rounds with him the first fight. I believe Kovalev with Buddy McGirt, who wants him to use his jab, who wants him to let the fight come to him, instead of trying to impose his will on his opponent. Right? That's what got him decked by Blake Caparillo early. Right? Gets off the canvas, goes on to win the fight. My point to you is, if Kovalev comes in and decides, okay, I'm going to be on my back foot. From distance, I have the best punch in this fight. Canelo has to be up close to throw that left to the ribs. Right? I have the height advantage. I can use length, reach. Keep this fight outside. Shoot a few jabs. Have Canelo then feel the pressure of needing to try to get me to engage more? Have him start to get more aggressive? Has him, his focus on defense start to fall apart? Have him start walking into my jabs? If Kovalev does that and this fight makes it to the second half of the fight, folks... You're cashing your tickets. The bet I'm recommending is Kovalev hedged with the over where you buy a few rounds. So you're covered if Canelo does anything from the seventh round on. I don't expect Canelo to be able to hurt Kovalev for the first half of the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'll agree. In the later part of the fight, when guys start to get tired, when a 36-year-old starts to feel 36, Canelo might be able to come inside and start landing body shots and stuff like that. But let's remember, that's how many rounds it took Alvarez to do that against Kovalev. Right? Eleanor Alvarez. Understand, Ward, that's eighth round action. Right? For the first six, I don't believe Canelo's going to hurt Kovalev. I don't believe Canelo's going to get a KO. Even as a minus 500, minus 450 favorite, I don't believe Canelo's going to get a KO over Kovalev in the first half of this fight. I believe this fight is qualitatively different than a Rocky Fielding fight. Also, ask yourself, I thought Canelo did great in the Danny Jacobs fight. Did great the first half of the fight. Canelo almost sweeps the first half of the fight. How close did he get to stopping Danny Jacobs in the Danny Jacobs fight at middleweight? Right? Kovalev has a better jab than Danny Jacobs. Right? Kovalev has one of those rare jabs. I'm just telling you, that's going to keep Canelo at bay for at least the first six rounds of this fight. Right? I like Kovalev to win at a plus 350. They're paying you for the risk. I'm going to structure my play so that if Canelo does anything from the seventh round on, I'm covered. 
One way to do that is to take the over and then to buy Canelo in rounds seven, eight, nine, right? If that over under number is nine and a half, ten. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.